All right, everybody. This is Mr. Fugu. You're watching Mr. Fugu Data Science. Today, we're sending data from R to MongoDB and back with MongoLite. Look at this happy little thing. All the code will be provided on my GitHub, Mr. Fugu Data Science. Also, if you like this and would like to see future videos, feel free, Mr. Fugu Data Science. Don't forget to provide a like for this video and please turn on your notification bell if you subscribe. We will be sending data frames and CSV files to Mongo from R. We will verify this by ba uh, running basic queries and then we will figure out how to send data from Mongo to R. I provided the official documentation for Mongo Lite and I feel that you could browse through here figure out how to do your basic install if you have uh, user credentials and would like to find various ways of uh, dealing with that it's here also other techniques we won't be covering today are provided in this documentation I feel it's a very valuable uh, resource I suggest you look at it install the Mongo Lite package as well as JSON Light, we will not be using our uh, JSON today. We need Knitter, Markdown, Dplyr as well. I found that while well, I tried to log into localhost just like this, uh, yeah, you get a big old fat. Eh -eh. So I said, well, what about if I use some collection and we'll use user info maybe that's gonna work nope still says screw you so I say okay fine what do I have to do to satisfy you so I say alright let me just make it really simple for localhost maybe that's default and I say well let's just look for our collection and our database within that well yippee we got ourselves a connection now and let's make a query and figure out if we have any data inside of Mongo in this table or collection so let's call everything let's get a glimpse of this data and let's provide a uh, data frame and only take the first few rows oh wait there's nothing there well that sucks well you don't always have to have something in a in a collection MongoDB lets you create it on the fly remember so this populated real quick from a previous file and there we are now we have 5800 rows and five columns this is what happens when you use the dplyr glimpse and then here's the data frame where you provide the head and I say okay cool let's run another query since we know proof of concept works we could actually make our connection and query from Mongo and back into R. So we find all the people named Alex and we say, okay, let's look for someone else. Let's look for Mr. Bishop again, like our last video. Oh yeah, Mr. Bishop's still alive and ticking too. Cool. So then let's send some data from MongoDB to R. Well, huh, what do we got to do there? Well, this require an RJSON IO and then let's say well we're taking a JSON file and we're dumping it into a file that we're naming user underscore dump JSON we say okay fine what does this goofy thing look like anyway right so let's look at user dump JSON and there we go but mind you this is empty because the new line separator is used and that's important for Mongo to read files and that's how it uh, exports as well so we take our two lines that we just used and we say well we need to read this file in we'll store it as lines we'll create a data frame we'll use s apply we will call in our file lines its uh, function is from JSON and then we're saying row names are false and then we're storing it at, we're 
printing off the data frame that we just created as the first few values. And we'll look at that. Now we have the ID that's associated with each document that you're, you have. So that can be useful if you need it. So we say, okay, perfect. Well, let's drop this in, and delete this collection real quick and then count it. So I just deleted it. It's not there. We go into Mongo. We could look. Hmm, nothing there. That sucks. Well, yes and no. The collection is still there. It just needs to be populated again. So we're going to say, okay, let's send our data frame from R to Mongo now. So let's create our data frame. So we're saying, let's take our file that we created before with fake users. We're keeping the header and we're separating by comma and we're excluding the first column. But what really was that first column we're excluding? Stupid row numbers that we didn't need. Okay, sure. Well, then how are we going to send this data frame into Mongo? We need to convert it into a JSON file. So then you say, all right, let's call our JSON Lite. And we'll do colon colon, which means we're calling a specific function in JSON Lite, which is converting whatever file we have to JSON, where we take our data frame, we put collapse equals an empty string, and then by row is true. Then what I said before, we need to separate by new lines. So what we're doing is we're writing a file where we're calling x, which we just wrote, putting it into a made-up file name that I'm creating, and then from there, we're sending it to Mongo. No error, so it must have sent. Perfect. What's this file look like? What's going on here? So we go back in here. We say, okay, here's our file. Here's each one of our records separated by our new line. Okay, that's cool. Well, let's figure something out. What happens if we don't provide collapse equals? Well, you get a problem. You get a little error when you try to read it in here, and I'll show you what your file becomes after 100 years of this working. Perfect. You get this right here, that comma. That comma is the bane of your existence and screws you up when you try to do that import later because even when you try to change the separator it doesn't work so then we could say alright we just inserted 5826 rows so we have our data we could look real quick and we just I don't know we could find can you do a find one here I don't know let's find out It doesn't let you just do find one, huh? Okay, fair enough. But we know it's there. So then let's say, all right, let's convert our CSV file, all right? Let's, let's send it to Mongo from R. We do the same process again where we need to convert that CSV to a JSON format for it to be uh, read. And so I say, all right, assuming I didn't have this is just for illustrative purposes. You, let's assume you already had a CSV file to chuck in there. I'm creating one. So I'm converting my uh, user data frame and I'm storing it as wowses CSV, which is just a funny name I wanted to write. So store wowses. Look into wowses. So, oh yeah, that's everything. There's our header. There's all of our info. Okay, cool. It works. So then we say, all right, now we have to read this file in again. We'll convert it to a JSON. We'll do the collapse. We'll do all the stuff we did in the last one. Name it as a different file. Send her off. Yes, we did it. But wait, what if we just want to do an import and just take a JSON file directly? If 
fine. Let's look at our JSON file. We'll say, oh yeah, this looks all right, but be aware, you got some funny stuff going on here. Let's see what happens. So, we have 11.652. Now we have 11.653. What's going on here? Well, all of your data was stored as one document, not individual documents. And you have an issue, and it's this. They're sending a list as one document, only creating one uh, ID number instead of individual ID numbers for each document. All right? Like this. This is creating individual documents. This is creating one. There's your distinction. What we had to do here is you're reading in line by line that file so you could send it off. And that's where you get a problem. So remember, 116533. Okay, fine. So then we do an insert of our data frame directly. And we just inserted 5,826. Perfect. We inserted the whole data frame. We have uh, five columns. We didn't remove, upsert, or anything like that. Okay, cool. So that's the end of this video. And now I would like to say, I hope that this provided some kind of utility for someone and you like the content. Throw me a like if you like the material and please subscribe. And as always, I would like to say thank you for watching. Wish you the best and have a good one. Bye.